go. 20 seconds. Want to learn more about the Muscle Booster app? Well, in this video, I'll be going over everything you need to know. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Kevin and I'm a certified personal trainer. And on my channel, you'll find weekly reviews, tips and tutorials on fitness apps, equipment, and more. And today we're looking at the Muscle Booster app. Muscle Booster is a fitness app that aims to help you gain muscle and lose weight with specially designed workouts and training plans that can be performed either at home or at the gym. The app says that it's tailored specifically for men, but I'd say that it can also be used by women looking for solid strength training workouts. In this video, I'll be going over the cost of the app, training plans, demonstrating the workouts, going over the meal plan features, as well as some of the settings that you can toggle. Finally, at the end, I'll share my thoughts on the app and then give you my overall recommendation. Let's start with cost. Muscle Booster is a premium app that has three pricing options. One month for $19.99, one year for $59.99, three months for $29.99, and lifetime access for $99.99. Unfortunately, there are no free trials for this app, so you would need to pay in order to give it a try. The most popular option is three months for $29.99. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the app. Selecting a training plan. When you start the app, you'll immediately set your goals which determines your training plan. You can either select a muscle gain goal or a weight loss goal. You'll be asked a few questions, such as what motivates you to exercise, your body type, desired body type, target zones, fitness level, and other questions to help assess your current physical state. A neat feature is that you'll be able to select your training location, whether that's at home or at the gym. If you select home, the workouts will consist of body weight movements, whereas selecting the gym, will have workouts that incorporate equipment. However, this app classifies working out at home as pretty much having no access to equipment. So if you do have a pair of dumbbells at home, they wouldn't be used under the home category. If you do anticipate using dumbbells, then I'd recommend you select the gym plan. Plan tab. When you're on the plan tab, you'll see your plan name at the top, whether that's a weight loss plan or a muscle gain plan. There's a progress bar that fills based on how many workouts you complete. You can swipe through and see all the workouts for the plan on their respective dates. On any date you select, you'll see all your workouts scheduled for the day. Some are listed as main, which are important for you to complete, and some listed as additional, which aren't mandatory, but are nice to perform if you can. If the plan calls for a rest day, it'll be listed as such. All of these workouts are created for you based on the goals and preferences you set at the beginning of the plan. If you targeted mostly upper body muscles, you'll likely see a majority of upper body exercises. For any of the workouts, there's a blue start button you can hit. When you hit the blue start workout button, you don't actually start the workout. You get a preview of the routine, and if you wanted to start the workout, you would need to hit the start workout button at the bottom to begin. Being able to see the exercises before starting the workout is helpful, so you know what's ahead. I highly recommend viewing the workout beforehand so you know what equipment you might need. It would be frustrating if during your workout, you realize you need to use a certain piece of equipment and you're nowhere near it. Also on this workout screen, you'll see the title of the workout, time duration, and number of exercises. I want to note that unless the workout is all time-based, that the duration is just an estimate. There may be some workouts that involve rep counts, and if you need more time to perform the reps, the longer the workout will be. So just look at the time duration as an estimate. If you are curious about any exercise, you can tap on the icon and see a demonstration of the exercise. Many demonstrations will feature this animated body, as well as red highlights showing which muscles the exercise is targeting. There's also written out information on how to perform the exercise. However, it doesn't seem all of these exercises are equally as detailed. There are some demonstration videos that feature an actual person performing the exercises on a loop. Also, if you'd like to swap out exercises for any particular reason, that's what the double arrow icon to the right of the exercise is for. For example, if the exercise is a shoulder press and it shows the use of a machine, you could swap that out for a similar exercise using the equipment you have access to, such as dumbbells. Every workout you want to do needs to be downloaded, and that happens every time you start a workout. If you anticipate going somewhere where there's no Wi-Fi or very little reception, then I recommend downloading the workout ahead of time by tapping the cloud icon on the top right corner of the workout. Back on the plan tab and below your workouts, you'll see a module for walking, which tracks your steps. You can connect this to your phone, so it gives you another look into your activity for the day. To enable this feature, just tap the green connect button and allow the required permissions. 
At the top right is a book icon with a question mark. This is meant to explain the difference between main workouts and additional workouts. Workouts tab. In the workouts tab, you'll see two options at the top, one for workouts and the other for exercises. Under workouts, there are currently six options. Also note that these workouts are different from the ones set in your plan. Most workouts consist of a warm-up, primary training exercises, and a cool down. There are workouts for strength using dumbbells, which is flagged as new at the time of this video. The workouts in this section all look to target specific muscle groups and are around 20 minutes in length. The morning routine workouts collection has a lot of seven minute workouts that are themed to start your day. The exercises here are mostly body weight. The strength home category consists of over 300 workouts. However, it looks like some of these pictures don't match the actual exercises you see. For example, you see this man working out with dumbbells, but that's not actually part of the selected routine. Remember that home workouts consist of just body weight exercises. Workouts here range from 10 minutes all the way to 40. Under recovery, there are a few stretching and mobility workouts ranging from 10 to 15 minutes. The strength gym category has the longest workouts from nearly a half hour to almost an hour long. So you'll be getting a lot of time using equipment and pumping iron. The cardio workouts range from 10 minutes to almost a half hour and consist a lot of body weight movements. Underneath the exercises tab, you'll see all of the exercises for working out your abs, arms, back, calves, chest, glutes, shoulders, thighs, and total body. I think this is a helpful resource because you can see all the different exercises that you can do to target specific muscles. Strangely though, tapping these exercises automatically triggers a workout. So it doesn't seem like it was designed for you to build a routine. There also isn't any filtering you can do to separate stretches, body weight movements, or weighted movements. There also isn't any real organization to the exercises as they're not alphabetical. However, I do notice that as you scroll, there are different models performing the moves. So my guess is these exercises are listed in the order in which they were added. Now that I've shown you what the app interface looks like, let me show you the app in action. Demonstration. Go, 30 seconds. Go, 10 repetitions. Go! Go! 20 seconds. Almost finished. Meal plan tab. Integral to any weight loss or muscle gain plan is nutrition. And the Muscle Booster app tackles this with meal plans. You'll see that each day has specific foods listed under each meal. However, there's very little context into how this factors into your day. It seems to suggest these are the only things you're eating for each meal. When you tap on the food item, you'll see the recipe, macronutrient breakdown, the ability to adjust serving sizes, and instructions on how to prepare. Unfortunately, there's no video demos. If you're not a fan of the prescribed food, you can tap the double arrow icon to the right of the food and swap it out for something else. But there are only a few options to choose from. The type of meal plan you're on is listed at the top. Here, it says standard. If you tap view all, 
you'll see different types of meal plans, such as clean eating, lactose-free, Mediterranean, Scandinavian, paleo, vegetarian, vegan, low-fat, standard, keto, and low-carb. Tapping on each of these will give you an overview of the diet, the macronutrient ratio, and foods to eat and foods to avoid. There's also some notes for people who are better off avoiding this diet. Settings tab. Under settings, you can adjust your personal details, integrations with the app, and notification preferences. Settings is also where you'll go if you want to change your training goal, whether it's from weight loss to muscle gain or vice versa. You can toggle your fitness level between beginner, intermediate, and advanced, as well as your training location. You'll also have the ability to choose both gym and home. You can also adjust your problem zones, so workouts are more catered to those specific areas, daily step goals, and days you're able to work out. Under meal settings, you can toggle what meals appear, which also includes snacks, as well as any allergies you might have, so it avoids recommending meals with those ingredients. Training history will show you all of your past workouts. Guides will promote muscle boosters guides that are for sale that cover cardio training, healthy eating, mobility, and sleep with a value of $119.99, but $29.99 for Muscle Booster users. The good. The Muscle Booster app excels when it comes to creating workouts. The workouts, in particular the main workouts in the plan, are very comprehensive in that they include thorough stretching before and after the primary workout, a mix of cardio and strength exercises, and substantial rest periods. The app is also really helpful when it comes to learning how to perform these exercises. I find the animation videos with the muscles outlined in red to be the most helpful. It makes it clear where you should be feeling tension in your body, which can help you with warm. The workout is also very easy to follow along with. You simply perform the displayed actions for as long as the countdown says, or as many reps as listed. Being able to see all of the exercises beforehand, and having the ability to switch them out for exercises you have equipment for, is very helpful. I also like having access to the exercise library because you're able to see all the different ways you can work out specific muscle groups. There is flexibility with the days you work out, and if you wanted to refocus on different areas of your body, all factors are easily adjustable. The bad. There are definitely some areas this app can improve. For instance, there's no weight tracking in this app. And what I mean by that is that you can't record the amount of weight you used for particular exercises. Rather, when performing exercises that involve dumbbells, the parameters you have are to use a weight in which you're able to knock out a certain number of reps. It would be cool to note if you were able to use a certain amount of weight for a particular exercise and see how that improves over time. Unfortunately, you're not able to do that on Muscle Booster. While I did mention that I like the exercise library, the thing I don't like about it is that you can't actually build custom workouts from it. When you tap on the movement, you automatically trigger a workout, which I think is a little strange. The meal planning section is an area I think could use a lot of work. Based on the diet you choose, you're given a random selection of meals with few options to switch between. There's also not a lot of guidance when it comes to the food being recommended. Are these the only things you should be eating? The calories seem pretty low on some days if that's the case. Also, the recipes are all written out, as there aren't any videos to help you prepare. I think the whole section could be greatly improved. The last thing I think can be improved is giving people a free trial of the app. Many fitness apps have free or light versions, so people can get a sense of what they're committing to. With Muscle Booster, there's a price to pay just to try it out. Overall recommendation. Overall, if you're looking for a fitness app to help you with your strength training and are willing to pay a premium price, this app gets the job done. The workouts are comprehensive, easy to follow, are tailored to your own preferences, and the app offers a lot of resources in terms of exercises, with or without access to equipment. Meal plans aren't this app's strong suit, but for what the app provides in terms of exercise, it's definitely a worthwhile option. So that's my review of the Muscle Booster app. Let me know in the comments below, are you gonna give the app a try? Be sure to like and subscribe for more fitness app content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.